Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zidenti, and welcome back to another episode of another Metroid 2 Remake. <clears throat> Last episode, we did some stuff. This episode, we're going to do some things. Uh, now, we got the, the, the screw attack last episode, and uh, <clears throat> I actually got something between episodes. I got something to eat. I had some some Greek yogurt uh, with blueberries, strawberries, and a little granola, which I had this like thing of granola that I was saving specifically for my yogurt, my parfait, but uh, I, I don't know where that went. It's not on. It's not where I left it. So, but whatever, you know, Greek yogurt's fun. Anyway, <clears throat> once you enter this room, it's a purple room, as you can kind of see on the map. Very interesting. Uh, you're going to want to come into uh, that that first little portal thingy. It'll take you up here. So you'll see... There we go. Back down here. It shoots you straight up here. This is where you want to go. This is a very important... Make sure that you... Ouch. <clears throat> Make sure you do that. Also, these this blue background wall thing acts very similarly to um, the power cells and everything, and uh, <clears throat> it, it disrupts your beams. Uh, there we go. So make sure to drop a power bomb uh, either on your way forward or your way back through this room to pick up that missile tank. Anyway, we can't go up here because we can't shoot any uh, missiles or anything. We even can't shoot missiles over there. But if we go over here, the floor gives through. And we can, uh, there we go. Go right through. Once again, you want to drop another power bomb. Before you go through, because you can't drop it on the blue wall, of course. And finally, this looks very <clears throat> interesting. Oh, that symbol above our head looks uh, familiar. We get none other than probably my only favorite suit, other than the Varia suit, the gravity suit. Improved defense and liquid friction eliminated. And it doesn't say it, but as you can just see, we have our beam back. Now we're on here. And we can move uh, at normal speed in water and stuff. So I was saying before in the in the previous episode that um, although it's uh, the water levels are annoying in most games uh, unless it gives you like a a way to combat the water, uh, like in Majora's Mask, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, you have um, can I just okay yeah, in Majora's Mask it it, it gives you uh, the Zora Mask and you can just glide through the water. In this game, it goes through the gravity suit, so you can move at normal speed. So unless it gives you a way to maneuver through the water in a way that feels natural to you, um, then water levels don't re aren't really the strongest point in any game. But, it doesn't matter. So now you can see we can even space jump through here, uh, through the water, just like it's, just like it's air. But it's not, it's water. The only other argument I would have, uh, which is, goes against directly what I just said uh, about giving you like full mobility in water, is that too much mobility in water. Um, because then it's like, what's the point of having water if if your controls aren't hindered? That's the whole point of hindered controls in the water in the first place, so that you, it feels and you know that you're in water. But now it just feels like you're in air. There's nothing. There's no difference between me being in the air and being in the water. Uh, maybe different layouts, you can... Uh, what's it called? You can have a different like level layout, have uh, enemies positioned in different areas, but if you see from the water to the air, there, there is no difference. And so like, if, if, you, if you couldn't really tell by, by seeing what you're... Uh, by seeing that you're... Just, by seeing the, if you couldn't tell by seeing the transition between the water and the air, then you would just assume that, you know, it's the same thing. Say if you were, I'm not sure how colorblindness works, but if you were colorblind in a way that it, it ended up like that, then you couldn't really tell if there was any difference. And you couldn't really tell if there was water, which kind of loses the entire effect of having water, because, like, why would you need water? 
in an area if it doesn't, you know, hinder you in any way. Or it doesn't change up your controls. Which is usually why you can have, like, uh, like in the Mario levels, when you're underwater, you have the long glides and stuff. So it's annoying, but it's it's different and it mixes it up. And I, I, I guess you could argue, which is what I'm arguing right now, I suppose, that there is such a thing as too much mobility. Um, there is an item over here that we have not yet get. We need the screw attack to get that, but... We have to go a long way around and get it. So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, how do I get out of here? Oh, this way. <clears throat> oh, great. I had the screw attack. I could have just waited. I'm going to go ahead and go the... Uh, uh, avoid uh, getting that thing for right now. Because it's, uh, it's, it's out of the way for us for what we're trying to do. Anyway, hopefully you guys understand at least somewhat. So there's a bunch of things here. Uh, let me explain these real quick. These lead to all different areas in the game. This is the time of the game that you want to backtrack. Um, almost. If we take a look, we have pretty much everything except for a single beam that we're missing. That final beam can be obtained in this area and is actually what we're about to go get right now. And then I like to backtrack after that. But now that you have every single item after you get the the last beam, then that's that's the that's the best time to backtrack through this game. And uh, using those tunnels, which lead to every area in the game except for one, I think. Um, that's like I said, just the best time to backtrack because nothing's gonna stop you. you. Can't stop me now. I love the gravity suit. I think I've talked about this. They introduced a gravity suit way too late in the Zero Mission. Oh, wait. Speed booster. I wonder what we can do there. Can we drop directly down? Fall sh ah, straight into the water. Kind of straight into the water. <clears throat> and you see that we actually have to speed boost our way up. So let's see if I can do that on the first try. So come over here. Speed boost your way over. Oh man, okay, so what you want to do is line yourself up right here to the left of these uh, these four lines after the rivet. And then uh, shine spark your way to the top. Bop, 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 bop to the top. There we go. No! Gosh dang it, Samus. If you do it correctly, which I'm not doing correctly right now, then you should uh, be able to... I think that was a little bit too too far to the right. No, nope. right on it. Nice. All right, cool. Not first try, but whatever. See, like I was saying, positioning of enemies, because now enemies can like swim all around you, but enemies can also float in this game, which you've already seen. So it's like, is there any really? There's no penalty for being in the water. There's no there's nothing that differentiates the water from being any other area, you know? Which not necessarily bad, I suppose. It's just interesting to think about. I have to go all the way back cuz I missed that missile tank. Yay. Well, so it's not, like I said, not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something that's interesting to think about. Because the water, the, the being in the water level kind of loses its the, the entire point of being in the water in the first place. Maybe there's something else you could do in the water that you couldn't do anywhere else. Let's go this way, why not? Unfortunately, there's no reason to uh, uh, shine spark in this room, so it's just kind of a wasted shine spark. The rule of thumb in most Metroid games is if the area gives you enough room to shine spark, then you, you probably need to use that as shine spark. But even in some cases, the room doesn't give you enough room to shine spark. Uh, 
and you're gonna have, to, but you still have to shine spark anyway. Those are the most interesting rooms, and that's where I had the most trouble in Zero Mission, is that you have to. There's so many. Uh, sh you have to shine spark chain, which I think you only have to do once in this game. But uh, the shine spark chaining in in Zero Mission was crazy. There's this. There's this one. There's this one, which is one of the w ones I couldn't do. You have to shine spark like. Oh god, I don't even know. Maybe seven or more times in a row. Um, there are other Shine Spark ones, which I actually did learn to do, which is how I learned how to Shine Spark in the first place. No, I'm still missing something. <clears throat> which is how I learned Shine Spark in the first place, or Shine Spark Chain in the first place. But, um... Once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad, but that, that... That one from Zero Mission, dude, it's crazy. Oh, man. Oh, snap. <clears throat> Always on my super missiles. Oh, but that's the rest of the Metroids. The Metroids are in the water. That's interesting. I never realized that. I guess Metroids can swim, then. That means we should get an earthquake. No. <clears throat> I don't know. About the whole water level thing, the movement in water. Leave a comment to see how I want to see how you guys what you guys think about that because that's that's something interesting that I, I think about whenever I play uh, water levels in any video game. Like in Majora's Mask, um, when you when you use a Zora Mask, you can you can move around the water very fluidly, but it's still you're still swimming. It doesn't feel like you're just it doesn't you're obviously it doesn't feel like you're on land. You know, it's it's obvious that you're still swimming. We just have more mobility, which is a nice balance. Meanwhile, in this game, like I said, the argument of too much mobility, because <clears throat> now it doesn't even feel like you're in water. There's no difference. <clears throat> anyway, we've already been over here. Oh, okay, ha! <clears throat> so we're back here. Um, there is something else I need to do back in the area that we were just were. So we're gonna go <clears throat> travel back over there. No, gosh dang it. <clears throat> Alright, we'll wait for this. Gravity suit. Let's talk about the gravity suit. I love the gravity suit. I love the colors. I love blue, my favorite color. I love purple. Purple and yellow complement each other. There's nothing not to like about the gravity suit, you know what I mean? Purple and yellow or purple and orange? Purple and yellow, because blue and orange complement each other. Um, the gravity suit looks fantastic. I love, especially when you're in, I love the, the blue uh, accents, uh, and I love, uh, I love the, uh, the blue on the morph ball. The green looks fantastic, don't get me wrong. over here. Nothing? 200 missiles, pretty good. Pretty nice, pretty sweet. So, back down here. Because like I said, there's still a beam that we're missing. Which, you can probably figure out what beam we're missing. If you've ever played a Metroid game before. It's a very important beam. <clears throat> Which we can't get from there, I guess. Like I was saying it's a very important beam. Uh, oh, this way, maybe? <clears throat> uh, in order to beat the game. Let's go this way first. Okay, this. 
So, over here, there's a muscle tank, but also a speed booster thing. So what you're going to want to do is shine spark. Um, crap. <laughs> but you, you get what I'm trying to do. So let's do that. Oh, or not. Okay. There we go. As simple as that. Then we get to go over here. Who doesn't love spikes? That's like that. I, I keep referencing Zero Mission. Like that one uh, thing from Zero Mission. Ooh, an energy tank. And we still didn't get that beam though. Um... Perhaps we're not there yet? We'll see. Anyway, it's like that one thing from Zero Mission where, uh... What's that? Could you not, please? Thank you. Oh, I see. Wait, <clears throat> let's line that up. Okay. I don't really have a lineup for that, actually. Let's see. There we go. Oh, a super missile tank. Nice. We almost missed that. <clears throat> anyway. Um, one of the shine spark, uh, it's not shine spark, but one of the, the items that you have to get on the actual, um, the, the pirate ship at the end of the game. Um, you have to, like, swiggity swooty your way across, like, several of these, uh... Ouch. You have to, like, swiggity swooty your way across, uh, these, like, beams, and if you get hit by the beam, then the, 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 the pathway that you need to get the, uh power bomb or something disappears. It's just really annoying. Also, did I mess this up? Where do you get the ice beam? This is what we're gonna do. Um, actually, I'm gonna keep going. Oh well, no, because I need to... Hmm. I'm gonna end the episode off here. Yeah, how about that? I'm gonna end the episode off here, and then I'm gonna figure out what to do, because I don't remember from my practice playthrough, I suppose. And I shall meet you um, somewhere, which I'll show you on the map, uh, next episode. Thank you all for watching.